Hello and welcome. Today's topics are Corion, Amnion, and Yoxin. First of all, Corion, as you can see in this photo. It's a highly specialized extra embryonic membrane which participates to form placenta. In my placenta video, I already talked about this Corion and Corionic parts. It is formed by the somatopluric layer of the extra embryonic membrane and trophoblast. Somatopluric layer, I told you in my earlier videos, it is also known as parietal layer. Okay. Now, from this Corion, villi formation occurs okay villi is very very necessary to form the placenta anyway now the villi of the corions on the side of the decidua capsularis it slowly slowly disappears and forms a smooth part which is also known as chorionic leaf okay and the villi of the corion on the side of the decidua basalis further grows and develops and gives branching patterns that is known as chorionic frondosa. Well, this chorionic frondosa and chorionic leaf, I already talked about in my earlier videos of placenta. You can check those. Now, second topic, our amnion. What is amnion? It's a thin membrane that covers the amnionic cavity. This amnionic cavity, which ultimately develops in the embryoblast. If there is amnionic cavity, the roof of the cavity is formed by the amnion. And the floor of the cavity formed by the bilaminar germ disc. What is bilaminar germ disc? It is also I talked about in my earlier videos. You can check those. Now, by the end of the eighth week of embryonic period of development, this amnion ultimately covers the entire embryo, amniotic cavity, which is ultimately filled by the amniotic fluid. Now, contents of amniotic fluid is uh, mostly the water, then electrolytes, fetal urine, beta HCG, placental lactogen, and the cells which are exfoliated from the fetus. Now, what are the function of this amniotic fluid? First of all, it acts as a shock absorber. Then, it allows the fetal to free movement and rest of the clinical conditions which are associated with this amnion and amniotic fluid we'll talk about in obzen chapter, not here. Now, our last topic is our yolk sac. It is also a cavity which ultimately develops from the blastocyst, as you can see in this photo. Now, the yolk sac is three types, primary yolk sac, secondary yolk sac, and definitive yolk sac. What is primary yolk sac? Hypoblast cells multiplies and forms a cellular lining over the blastocyst cavity and that lining is known as host cell membrane. I already talked about these things in my earlier videos. Now from this host cell membrane the blastocyst cavity appears and this cavity is known as primary yolk sac. Now what is secondary yolk sac? After the formation of extra embryonic siloam it is little bit pinched off and another small yolk sac cavity forms. That small yolk sac cavity is known as secondary yolk sac. And what is definitive yolk sac? Now, during the embryo folding, the intraembryonic part of the yolk sac forms primitive gut, as I told you in my earlier videos. But the extra embryonic part of the yolk sac forms definitive yolk sac. Now, what are the function of this yolk sac? First of all, hematopoiesis. Hematopoiesis means it creates every types of blood cells which I will talk about later in physical chapter, not here. It creates every type of blood cells inside of the embryo. It forms or creates primordial germ cells, which ultimately creates gonads. I mean, the male gonads like testes, female gonads like ovaries, okay? And a very, very small part of the yolk sac helps to formation of allantois. So, I hope you will understand and see you soon in my next video. Till then, bye.